Oh, you whippersnappers, boy, oh boy. This is the week you get to eat your crow, Herd. You know why? You were complaining, hey, Kevin, why are some of these films barely making their criteria, if at all? Guess what today is? Today's the day Jackie Cation comes on and says, guess what? The Godfather? Pah! Overrated? That's right. Arguably the greatest film ever made, as now being targeted on this podcast. I never thought this day would come, but here we are. Who is sitting in his co-host? Dave Quist, my pal from the Blockbuster Mentality Podcast. As our minds are blown, does Jackie stand a chance in hell? Or is Jackie's argument going to look like Sonny in the toll booths when we're done with her? I don't know. That's why we're going to figure it out. Mellow greetings. What seems to be your boggle? Guest Dave Quist from the Blockbuster Mentality Podcast. What's up, pal? How are you? Oh, great to be here. Ready to see what Jackie has for what may be the greatest movie ever made. Name that quote. Mellow greetings. What seems to be your boggle? Oh, I have no idea. Oh, Jackie Cation is tonight's guest. Jackie, do you have any idea what quote that movie is from? Or movie that quote is from. Sorry. I juxtapose. I would it. guess some other sort of just wiener fest like Point Break or <laughs> uh, something like that. What What is it? <laughs> Well, listen, Point Break is a fantastic wiener fest, despite there being gratuitous nudity, which thumbs up with Swayze and Keanu. But no, you're both Who doesn't want to see it? Yeah, right? Little Anthony Kiedis getting his foot shut off. Hilarious. Tonight's quote is from the absolute 1993 classic Demolition Man. God damn, I love that film. Uh -oh. oh, damn. Is that where... No, what was the here's I got a quote for you. Sure. Uh your name is Chance? Yeah, my mama took one. Uh would that be hard target with John Claude Van Damme? Yes. Oh, oh my shit. god. <laughs> you are down with a craptastic film, my friend. Well played. Well played. <laughs> I just reread I sorry, just read a book about all the eighties and nineties and two thousands, really pretty much eighties and nineties action heroes. And I just finished it yesterday on the train back from Camden Yards to go watch the Yankees win. On Saturday. And I, there was a part about Jean-Claude Van Damme in there, which I'm a Van Damme fan from Bloodsport. And I and I saw Hard Target. It sucked. But they talked about his name, Chance Devereaux. So when you say Chance, I go, there's only one other name I know with that, with that name in there. And that's Hard Target. So I took my shot and I just drained that shit. Jordan 93. That's what's up. <laughs> nice work. Work. Thank you, it's, Jackie. Uh, Thank you very much. So this is why I love you, KG, because you like movies like that, and then you and then you shit on two thousand one. This is why I could keep coming back. You know the difference between <laughs> demo, you know the difference between Demolition Man and two thousand one. It had a plot, Demolition Man, and it was fun. <laughs> That's why. Was Kevin that, uh, I'm was sorry. That, go ahead, Jackie. Go ahead. You want to say something? I can't remember who was in Demolition Man. Uh, I'm in the part of show business that doesn't care. Sylvester <laughs> Stallone, Wesley Snipes, with there his we go. with his. <laughs> Hair dyed blonde. You know, the Dennis Rodman look when he was on the Spurs. Who cares about Demolition Man? Jackie, <laughs> Jackie Gation has come on. And the one, and I say this a lot. We call them the bulletproof oh, films. Do you? <laughs> I do. There are a lot of films that say there's no way someone can attack that. And one by one, a lot of these have fallen. Star Wars, <laughs> Back to the Future, The Dark Knight, Jaws. Okay. A lot of these films have been attacked. Here's one I thought would never, ever be attacked. And here we are. Jackie Cation has picked 1972's The Godfather. <laughs> I can't believe someone picked Jaws. Uh, yes. You yeah, should listen. You, you they should, ripped you should, apart Jaws. No, they didn't. They got ripped apart by us because <laughs> he's a dumb, dumb. I love you, Delvin Cox. <laughs> The Godfather. Yeah, I, I assume that I will be proven wrong. Oh. And that that I think that that I think is is fair enough. I mean, everyone should get to fucking like what they like. And the greatest movie ever made, Jumanji. Welcome to the jungle. Nobody wants to hear me say that, right? <laughs> Including Kevin Hart. <laughs> well, he's wrong on that part too, because Jack Black was a genius. I can't figure okay. out. I can't figure out what's worse, Jumanji two or Kevin Hart stand up. They're both equally abhorrable. I, I've never seen him do stand up. I'm sure uh, it's uh, I know that my 14 year old nephew, it was his favorite comic. Always a bad sign. But yep. uh, that does not mean that uh, people don't get to like him. So live it up, assholes. Live yeah. It up. <laughs> yeah, dumb dumbs. Jackie has chosen 1972's The Godfather, a budget at the time of six million bucks. Worldwide box office, two hundred and forty five million dollars. Turn that into twenty twenty three money. 
$43 million budget, $1.78 billion. Massive. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is this is just giving the old golden shower to Avatar, I think, right? <laughs> <laughs> I could have picked the first Guardians, and then I would have really been doxxed. But uh, let's just go with the Godfather. I don't let's think do you it. can get doxxed more. Guardians one, meh. Go- Godfather, people were up in arms. Let's see though how up in arms we will get to that in a minute though. IMDb, as we all know, is a scale one through ten with decimal points. Jackie, what do you think the Godfather has on IMDb? Patriarchy's given it's nine point six. Could have gone nine point six. <laughs> nine six. Hey, uh, Dave Quist, what did the matriarchy give this film? <laughs> matriarchy yeah for a little bit of a uh, little bit of barbie right so we'll knock it down a bit i'll say i mean imdb is tough there's not there's nothing that's a 10 i don't think unless it's some weird foreign film so i'll say i'll say nine even nine two you both are dancing around like square Ooh, dancing yeah. and dosy doing around this puppy we go to rotten tomatoes time one through 100 of course is this score a scale excuse me dave quist what did the critics give the godfather 98 jackie oh yeah 99 whoa this is they're touching themselves they're whoa. touching themselves yeah <laughs> well you're both so close 97 ah who's who are the three percent assholes i'm gonna have to go through yeah through yeah who are those three percent who had who were like i'm never gonna watch this anyway. well let's see how much of the audience is an asshole percentage we go back to jackie cashian jackie what did the audience give on the old one to 100 for the godfather Oh, I'd say probably an 86. Dave Quist. Oh, I think it's close to 100. I'll, I'm going to say, what did I say? 98 for critics? I'm going to yeah. say I'm, I'm going to say the same for audience. One of you is dead nuts on, has won both showcases, including a beautiful Toyota Yaris and an all-inclusive trip to Jamaica. Dave Quist, come on down. Damn. 98. 98 on That's the right, Jackie. Look, This is what you're up against, All baby. Right. <laughs> this is what I'm staring into. I'm staring into the barrel of a a barrel of a cannoli here. Let's do this. Oh, I can't wait for all the Italians from Ozone Park Queens to come on and knock on your door later on, Jackie. This is <laughs> come and knock on my door. Oh, okay. The swing. Is that just a Three's Companies reference? And why do I know that? Well, of course it was. It was one of the most know. known theme songs of all time. I couldn't remember the name of the show, but I did remember the song. Right. My mind's a blur, you guys. All I can remember is my act, and I'm lucky then. So let's do it. Quotes. You can act like a man. Can you guys imagine that happening now? Like Johnny Fontaine, <laughs> Johnny Fontaine explaining his pronouns to Don Corleone. <laughs> this is the uh-huh. funniest uh-huh. shit in the whole movie. Yeah. I, I rewound right. it to watch it back. And I, my wife loves the movie as well. It's, we were both just oh, cracking up through this. My brother, Russ, <laughs> quotes it to his students. He literally <laughs> is an econ professor at the University of Wisconsin. And he consistently says to his students, you could act like a man. And that would be uh, great. That'd be great. Them swing. <laughs> that would be great if he was a ballet teacher. That'd be funnier. <laughs> he also makes him do laps out in the courtyard. He's an ah, econ yeah. professor. Have I mentioned that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's see what you quiz. Can, fi- can you quiz figure out a quadratic equation while running the hills? <laughs> Next quote. I'm going to make an offer he can't refuse. Repeated ad nauseum. Mm-hmm, Next one, mm-hmm. and this is this is the funniest line. I paused, goofed, rewound, and goofed again. I don't care how many Dago grease ball Goomba guineas come out of the woodwork. And then Tom Hagen with the most deadpan line goes, I'm German Irish. <laughs> <laughs> and then the guy just reloads to his, oh, yep. let me just adjust my eth- ethnic slurs to fire yep. back at you. Yep. <laughs> Next one, of yep. course, another obvious, leave the gun, take the cannoli. My mm-hmm. uh, my favorite one to give to my wife, and she gives back to me, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, Wednesday. <laughs> Don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Another no-brainer. And, of course, don't ever ask me. And I say this to my wife. Don't ever ask me about my business again, Kay. Hell, yeah. <laughs> Is her name Kay? No, her name is Nicole, but close. No, I wanted it to be Kay. I did, too. <laughs> I, I, mar- <laughs> I, I, I married a half Italian. I didn't go the Irish route. Hey, Jackie, what quotes jumped out at you that I pretty much picked apart for everybody? Sorry about that. Uh, what's the quote? Um the 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 one that gets quoted a lot in my family is the one is like uh it's like so 
so you come to me on my yes. daughter's wedding. <laughs> I mean, literally the whole fucking speech. I get this. <laughs> I got four brothers and a dad. My dad was a bag man for a bookie for many years. Uh, I can't fucking stand this movie. Oh. Anyway, so we'll get to uh, it. We'll get to uh, it. We'll I get mean, to it. Uh, but I like, but I like the quote, quote selection. I made a note about that later on. Yeah. yeah any yeah. other, any other quotes you have written down or that's all. It's, uh, there was the, the one at the very end. Where uh, isn't it? Isn't it? Uh, K. K. K says something about about uh, his business or something like that, and and then he's like, and then there's that long shot where the guy kisses his ring. So what's the what's the line right before that? I can't remember the line. It's you have to know that I've seen this movie twice, and the second time was under duress because of this. Uh, so, duress uh, my duress my taint. You're the one who picked this film. <laughs> it's true, but I picked it because uh, because I was uh, I didn't know I was going to have to watch it. I thought All I was right. just going to go. I don't know what I thought the hour was going to be. <laughs> no, I'm just going to pick a movie I didn't like, and then you guys were going to talk about how, how great it was. I think that's what I thought it was. Maybe <laughs> Dave Quist. Any other quotes? It could with very you? easily happen. Mm-hmm. It's not personal. It's business. I mean, come on. That's, oh yeah, obvious. Just... Too, too obvious. But I had to. But okay, right, right. Fish. Who does? I mean, I do love fish. Yeah, well, it's from, sleeping uh, with from the Barney fishes. Miller. Yeah. Yep. No, no. Uh, fish from uh, Barney Ava, Miller. Ava, Ava, Ava Goda. Goda. Oh yeah. god, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the. You know, I wonder if that that line that Abe Goda utters later, if um, if like you know, it would let me off the hook for old time's sake. I wonder if that was a common thing then, or if we've like that's become famous afterwards. That was one thing. I'm not sure. Um, and, I'm sorry, uh, Sally. Can't do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, did you say make him an offer, Karen? I mean, that's of course. Yeah, of yeah. course. Yes, I did. Yep, yeah, yep, yep. Okay. I liked. Um, yeah, you, you you can act. You can act like a man. I think those are really the the big the, the cannoli, the fishes. I mean, that's that's it. <laughs> that those are the big ones. That's uh, it. And and the thing about ins- don't insult my intelligence. I love that line. That's my favorite. Bye, fun. Yeah, backs. The studio wanted a oh. more salacious gangster movie, so it threatened to fire Coppola, even going as far to have stand-in directors waiting on set. Coppola was reportedly getting the axe until he shot the scene where Michael kills Salazzo and McCluskey, which the executive saw and loved. Wow. Can you imagine yeah. like that? Mm-hmm. The, the sort of Damocles hanging over your head the entire time, and it turns out you made arguably one of the, the greatest film of all time. Hilarious. And- uh, great the 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 limited series the offer on paramount plus plus is an absolute must watch uh, is it, it i, I got to yeah, watch that it's the whole it's starring miles teller um fantastic got to watch it number 2 okay this, so uh, okay. wait, wait go, no jackie go ahead uh, you want to say something i, I always i i'm i'm, I'm going to be behind the eight ball on this entire episode look forward to it fans of this film uh so that the quote i was thinking of sure. instead you come into my house on the day my daughter is to be married and you ask me to do murder for money and uh my, I, it's when i asked my brother russ for money to pay for my dui and he's like <laughs> you, you come into my house you come into my house. He doesn't have a daughter, by the way. He has two sons. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, no. This is integral to my family is what oh, I'm saying. Oh, oh, tell, okay. oh tell, tell me you mowed someone down in a drunken rage. That makes that story so much better. <laughs> I quote some more apropos. Oh, it would have been. Get him with the door. Get him with the door as we mm. drive by. Okay. So, uh, yeah. No, that was. Good okay. one. So, number what? two. Also- I'm so sorry. Yeah, the bra. Oh, I got another one. Luca Brasi, may the child be a masculine child. I just love that. Yeah, <laughs> I, wanna, I, 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 I sent it to a too. buddy of mine. Yeah. <laughs> the studio wanted. Oh, I love these. Uh, my favorite. Who could have played them? Role. I'm going to give you uh, two chances to guess who they were wanted to play. Michael Corleone. Both names, mega stars in the '70s. One still '80s and maybe a little bit '90s and a little bit 2000s. The other guy has disappeared off the face of the earth. Who did the studio want to play Michael Corleone initially? Go shout it out if you know, or if you don't. I think it was uh, Redford, wasn't it? That's one. The other one? Guesses? Yeah, I don't remember. Paul? Nope, not Paul. (laughs) Ryan O'Neill. That's funny. Ryan Ryan (laughs) O'Neill. Oh, so glad. Oh, there you go. Yeah. He almost. He did um, did Paper Moon instead. (laughs) Okay. Oops. Yeah, and he was in. Paper Moon. (laughs) 
uh, yeah, Paper Moon and uh, 1972 uh, as well, I believe. Yes. Sir. What's it? The uh, Barry Lyndon. He's really not that. It's a good movie, but he's not great in it. He's just like an empty, complete empty vessel. Mm-hmm. Also, one of the for the other roles, who what was uh, approached to play Sonny? Big, huge name in the 70s. Huge. Nicholson. Uh, no, in, in 1972 to yep. play Sonny. That wasn't. Wait. Who Hoffman? played Sonny I again? I take that back. Who, I'm who sorry. I, I take James this Con. back. Con. I take that back. Okay. These other two were considered for Michael. I take that back. So, huge name in the 70s. Oh, there we go. Huge name in the 70s. So, so another two. So, both huge in the 70s. Huge in the 70s. <laughs> one, one is a bit of a trick question, but I'll, but I'll give you two more chances here. Huge in the 70s, both names. What do you got? Anything else? Warren Beatty. No. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ricardo Montalban. He's actually uh, what, that is, <laughs> close. Close. Okay. It was. It was Hervé Villachez. No. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the plane. And then John Ritter. No. Uh, Martin Sheen to play mm-hmm. to play Michael. Oh, that makes. Of, yeah. To make sense, and then James Caan tested for him, but did not get it. Obviously. Yeah. Oh, okay. Number three. Wow. Le- Lenny Montana, who played Luca Brazzi, was a professional wrestler before becoming an actor. He was so nervous delivering his lines to a legend like Brando during the scene in the study that he did not give one good take during the entire day shoot because he did. Coppola did not have time to reshoot the scene. Coppola added a scene where Luca Brazzi is rehearsing his lines before seeing The Godfather to make Montana's bad takes seem like Brazzi was simply too nervous to talk to the Godfather. <laughs> Love it. Smart move. Nice fix. Nice yeah. fix. Yeah. This it's is like almost... El Mariachi when he keeps cutting to the dog. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, of course. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Or Spielberg cutting around a shitty shark not working and making it first mm-hmm. person. <laughs> right. Get ready for this one. This one blew me away. The horse's head in the movie producer's bed was not a prop. Nope. <laughs> They, oh, they, shit. they talk about it this was an actual offer. prop. It was a real horse's head. Yep, from a local <laughs> dog food company. Yeah. How <laughs> the hell did the ASPCA sign off on this? Uh, but they're the same how, ones. And how the hell did that actor just not? He, he's like, it's literally some real blood, some fake horse blood, but whatever it was, he had to act next to a rotting horse head. Yes, hence the scream. <laughs> Wouldn't that have been in the bee's knees if he reaches over to the ho- the horse's head, takes a bite, goes, it's no big deal, like Bill Murray's <laughs> daddy <shack. laughs> Number- Yeah, this thing's been hacked so bad. Anyway, go ahead. Number five, after meeting with the Italian-American Civil Rights League, the Amer- the, an organization formed to combat the use of stereotypes about that group, Coppola um, agreed to omit the words from the script, mafia. Mm-hmm. So they use Cosa yep. Nostra, yeah. Yeah, that too. Mm-hmm. And that those are some fun facts, if I do say so myself. Thank you. <laughs> Thank great. you, Internet. Let's go <laughs> and ask the, we call them the herd, those are the folks who want to know what in the living hell is going on and why you hate this film. And this section, of course, being called Ask a Gutter at Almighty Ray. Ray Stacanus from the Who Would Win show. Someone's trying too hard. This episode should be as one-sided as a hydraulic, hydraulic press versus a baseball. Question, what would be a good example of a good crime slash mob movie to this gutter? Jackie, what's a good crime slash mob movie to you? Well, therein lies therein r- lies the the rub, doesn't it? It's uh like Goodfellas is is that the Cohen brothers? Is that no? No, I think it's Mil- Miller's Crossing. Mi- yep. Miller's Crossing. Miller's Crossing. That's a better uh mob movie. I like how you said Just Goodfellas because. and didn't even say that as the best choice. No, no, it isn't. Miller's Crossing. Miller's Crossing is a better mob movie than this one. I respectfully disagree. <laughs> <laughs> right. But the thing is, is everything, it's sort of like saying, you know, it, it's hard because no mob movies were made. Before this, they were all caricatures, right? It right. was all just like Sheldon Leonard going and James Cagney going, yeah. And uh, Edward G. One, Robinson, another quiet. one. Yeah. Yeah, and just quietly, this this movie is uh, 
sort of more realistically quiet people killing people right. and uh hilariously so which i i get i get why it's beloved i'm just saying that i don't uh i don't enjoy it but i did like miller's crossing better because here's another thing no sequel and it's shorter how about that <laughs> that's something i enjoyed i also uh midnight run I enjoyed that a great deal. <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do with the mom. No, it's got nothing to a do little with it bit. at all. <laughs> a little bit. Actually, the guy who's going to take the fork and stick it through his eye. Yes. Uh, yeah. Remember that? I like and how you just... the greatest buddy movie in the world. Yeah. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Great buddy movie. Give me Be- Be- Bill's Cop. It takes that cake, my dear. I will I will put that above uh, Midnight Run. Hey, baby cakes. Let me tell you something about uh, Midnight Run, honey. Uh, I did. Midnight Run's the greatest uh, buddy movie in the world. No, so. Robert De Niro doesn't do comedy. We can see that very well. He's okay. Charles uh, Grodin no, is surprisingly great. He is great. That's, no, that's see, best. when Robert De Niro does comedy by being the straight man, he's hilarious. Every time you get a dog or somebody's grandchild involved, Robert De Niro should be buried <laughs> headfirst in the sand at his feet painted with honey ah. and ant should be released well actually I, t- I take that back because you're right jackie he is hilarious when he's a straight man especially when he was in the irishman giving the world's slowest curb job while seemingly <laughs> standing in quicksand because he's so goddamn old <laughs> that was hilarious i, I laughed that. i didn't see that uh, Fair it's enough. a it's a movie next yes. one <laughs> at, <laughs> at delvin cox i never watched it but i just wanted to make kevin goatee mad tell me why new jack city is a better film smiley face emoji Ooh. The the, the, the soundtrack it. the soundtrack is better the New Jack City than Godfather that I will say I don't even know if I agree Here's with that a, what I, you're insane yeah uh, Ice T doing I'll New Jack that. Hustler is one of the greatest songs in movie history it's catchy I was as fuck. in Venice in the square at a cafe they start playing the soundtrack to the Godfather I was like do you know that this is not helping your people. Italy. <laughs> anyway, so Did I'm everyone... literally having a cappuccino in Italy. So, so. Did everyone start doing the Tarantella? Da, 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 <laughs> that, when that was over. <laughs> It was less that, and uh, it went in Spain. Nobody did Speedy Gonzalez. And, but uh, uh, Speedy no. Gonzalez is Mexican. That's why they didn't do it. I've been to Spain too, and, and we all can't forget Pookie. Pookie is a great for a laugh or two as well, as I say about New Jack City. But that's that. Oh man. At Newark Night, <laughs> another question for Jackie. The Family Guy scene where Peter says he couldn't finish the movie because it insists upon itself. Do you agree with this line, or is it just a dumb one from a show? Oh, 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 oh. Here's the other thing. I don't like the Family Guy. Jesus so, H. Uh, Christ. So, I know it. it that was your out, opportunity, uh, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. It was uh, it was my my chance to make more friends with dudes. I've been doing comedy for too long to care if I'm friends with any more dudes. <laughs> so well, why yeah, are you yeah. so why are you so misandrous, Jackie? Well, I think it's just because uh, I've been living alive so long. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> What, are you, other than, than that, what did I, they do to you? This is obviously from something. This is family trauma. This is why you're here. So what? What actually, happened? Actually, my my brothers and my dad. I, not not an elbow squeezer or a or a or a a, a rapist among them. Okay. They're they're jackasses, but they're uh, it's a very low bar. You guys, I've been doing stand up comedy to have a super low bar with with some dudes. I've been but, doing stand up too, I, but not I, not as long as that. Do I hate do I hate that movie? Jesus age Christ! It's a more more. It's uh no the and and the thing is is it's I'm just bored of the movie actually which is actually a greater indictment of, of the of the movie than to hate it I'm sorry to say so all right Peter Griffin hater next question for you <laughs> bold bold so choice sorry. Jackie my question what what would all of your mob names be uh big julie wouldn't it be big julie from guys and dolls see you guys i don't i'm not gonna have the references you're gonna <laughs> show tunes for two straight dudes this is not this is this is the, this is the, cat- <laughs> this is the category in jeopardy i do i can never answer the only and the only time i get a question right is because i've seen a billboard I, I work in the city so i see the billboards or i see them on top of cabs i know nothing about broadway or show tunes so you will right right ha- have free the mob runway. Is, in, is in guys and dolls. <laughs> the mob is in guys and dolls, and Big Julie is uh, the mobster from Chicago who comes into town, and he and and he plays dice, and he's losing against the Marlon Brando character, and um the and Big Julie you wants to use his dice, which doesn't have any dots on it, and Big Julie says, "No, I remember where they were." Oh, do they sing this the entire time in dialogue? Because that's why I don't watch musicals. <laughs> 
It's uh, they don't because Marlon Brando can't sing. So <laughs> Marlon Brando sings like one and a half songs and uh, and it's not good. I would actually watch that just to watch that train wreck yeah. occur. Let's uh, yes. could have made all this up as far uh, as I know. Of, of course you could right, have. Right, exactly. I totally could have. <laughs> you, you, you might as well come Three on. Points, and, quest. You, you might as well come on and, and, and say that I'm a WNBA expert. I would just nod my head and agree. But go, okay, sure. Cheryl Swoop's got it. <laughs> Whatever. Right. Brittany Griner. I don't even know what that does. That's a, is that a, a sport? What is that? Barely. Barely. Oh, NBA. At Kevin Israel, Same. NJ, our buddy. What, what would Jackie take, the gun or the cannoli? This is a commonly themed question. So we'll just ask it once. Uh, yeah, you gotta, you gotta leave the gun. You take the yeah. cannoli. It's uh, your wife told you to bring the cannoli home. Fucking bring the cannoli. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Cannoli overrated, oh, overrated pastry. Thank you. No Next, way. Oh yeah. I never had a good one. Uh, wow. I, 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 I again, I work in the city. I've had plenty of them. They just don't do anything for me. Not a, not a fan. My, uh, at Rex Crum, my question, how long have you I'd identified agree. as Fredo? Oh, them fighting's words in my family. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, no, they always. Uh, it's funny because Russ always says Phil's Fredo, and then Phil always says Scott's Fredo, and Scott always says Russ is Fredo, and everyone knows that my brother Terry is Fredo. So there you <laughs> Poor go. Terry. <laughs> is, is Terry a wheezy asthmatic turncoat? Is and t- Terry's an evangelist with his own church who's doing a line veto of the Bible. Oh boy. Sounds like Terry's got his own private jet. <laughs> yeah, there's no reason why Terry shouldn't uh, shouldn't be a gajillionaire. Yeah, yeah righteous gemstones. Mean... <laughs> At Zyphos, I would ask if she enjoys sk- ice skating uphill. Uh, I can't even ice skate backwards, and I'm from Wisconsin, so this is a valid question. With that accent, I don't know Wisconsin? What... No, hard hard to believe. Oh, cripes, it's nice there. <laughs> Right. Next, <laughs> Joe Rami Jr. I recently read that Francis Ford Coppola, his own self, does not like The Godfather. For me, Donnie Brasco somewhat ruined it when Pacino says, no facial hair in Cosa Nostra. It's a statement, Joe, but okay. Love you anyway. I don't know if that's true. By the way, I think Donnie Brasco sucks. That's my take. Sucks? I can't I think say it sucks. sucks. I think it sucks. I think it's fine. It's it's, it's good. I, it's not in my t- It's not my pantheon, that's for sure. But it's the bottom of the barrel uh, of this this style of film, I think. Despite... As bottom of the barrel as bottom of the barrel as two thousand one, a space odyssey is. <laughs> don't don't, don't... <laughs> hey, we'll we'll save it. <laughs> well, I'll say, hey, my my last word on that thing is I liked the movie until I saw that in the four K restoration in theater, and it was an incredible experience. So that's that's my selling point. You'll never, I'll never drag you there. I'll never, I'll never change your mind. But no, that, that's what I, did for me. I, I require a plot and some semblance of direction. That's what I require. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm not going to apologize for anything along those lines. Next question <laughs> at Nemirovsky, Jackie. What is an example of a movie that deserves to be ranked higher than The Godfather that is otherwise considered an inferior movie? Well, that is well. That first of all, uh, does he want a paper on his desk of twelve hundred words on Monday? <laughs> Jesus Christ, a little more complicated, brother. Mm. It's uh, b- uh be- best movies of all time. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, the the uh, please repeat the question. He's basically saying, what, what would you put over? Okay, so well, that one so, might be no, the only I wouldn't one that put might Citizen, be. I wouldn't put Citizen Kane above it because I didn't like Citizen Kane either. But, I uh, agree I for Ca- once. Over and I would, put Casa, I would put Casablanca above it, sure. That's fair. At Citizen Kane, I agree. I don't, but Cas- I haven't, we did in the podcast, both of those. I forgot what I thought about Casablanca. Next one, at Joe Loves Cam, how delicious are the cannolis if Clemenza can still think about dessert right after a hit? <laughs> <laughs> that must be a hell of a cannoli. I've never had a great cannoli myself. It's a, it's really? a, it's a sad, sad state of affairs, yeah. And then, of course, next we have, oh, these are the scores. So we have a few score predictions. I will save until the end to has not influenced either of you. That is going to close Ask a Gutter. Now, hey, no one listens to the end of podcast. That's silly talk. So we get our plugs right out in the middle or even the beginning. Jackie Cation, what are you up to? Where can we find you? 
You guys want to watch something that's not worth watching? Nope. I have a new tiny oh. special. <laughs> it's a new special. It's 10 minutes of me telling car jokes into the ass of a Mazda 6 in reverse. <laughs> not even kidding. Uh, I am laved up standing behind a Mazda 6 staring into the uh, license plate. Uh, telling car jokes. Uh, my buddy Kyle is filming that car in reverse and either Olivia or Emily, I paid her a hundred bucks to keep her foot on the brake. So it wasn't a snuff film. It's called looking back. And if you go to Jackiecation.com, you can watch that 10 minutes of uh, car jokes uh, all you want. And then I'm going to be in Phoenix this weekend. I don't know when this is out. I'm always on the road. Jackiecation.com. Thank you very that's, much for your time. That's better. We still have a few more. A oh my God. We still have more ask a gutters here. So let's just, Roll through them. <laughs> we have a lot more, actually. Let's see. Uh, blah blah Why blah blah. Why wouldn't you? Are you kidding? This yeah. movie is beloved. <laughs> Next, uh, that's a lot of you. Oh, at pedestrian, do you think Elon made an offer that couldn't be refused? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Great. More. I refuse to elaborate. <laughs> yes. What that else? Is uh, okay, here we go. Someone can finally came from the number two movie on the AFI 100 list. Uh, Brandon says, I know KG hates this list, but does Jackie think the Godfather deserves to be second on the list or on the list at all? And the second half, would you have married a guy after hearing his first wife died in Italy over a year ago? <laughs> uh, my stepmother married my father and she didn't know he had six kids and he told her and then asked her to marry him and then she married him i come from a long line of terrible life decisions <laughs> you don't know you don't know i might did uh, he just catch her that. did he just catch her with a right cross a metaphorical right cross of the jaw like i got six <laughs> kids want to marry me and she's just like ah yeah what <laughs> essentially my parents were divorced nancy and my dad were living together my mom dies my dad comes in and, they, and nancy tells me the story she's like he comes in and he goes yeah my wife died i get the kids back and she's like what kids oops and he says i i have six kids and my dad's the kind of guy who always believes he's already told you <laughs> so she goes what kids and he goes you know the kids terry phillips scott russ darla jackie you know the kids and then she fucking married him which uh yeah uh that's on her i can so. relate if i say it in my mind then you should all be aware of it <laughs> did he rehearse that scene like matt damon in goodwill hunting and we memorized all the 12 <laughs> fake names for his brothers that out loud that he has no regrets in life. He is he should have several regrets. And the gas <laughs> the gaslighter award winner of this year is Jackie. Elliot dad. Cation. Look, yeah. What a what a Elliot marvel. Cation, friend of the people. Yeah, Ain't that the truth? Next boss. one, let's go to at Zyphos again. How addicted to Adderall is she? Oh, I ain't never tried no Adderall. I've been wanting to, it's though. Great. Holy smokes, is he's my dealer? Okay. What's your vice, Jackie? Uh, I, uh, uh, seriously, uh, cocaine, probably a the lot worst of it. thing. <laughs> the, wor the worst thing I do is I reread, I reread books, you guys. That's the lamest fucking a, shit I've ever Oh, Danny. I, know. I, I used to, I, I got two DUIs, so I don't drink anymore. So, you you and Danny I, Tanner have that sh same like you know super cutesy poo <laughs> peccadillos yeah. here rereading books. <laughs> uh, here's okay, so I get the first DUI. The cop pulls me over and he says, "Ma'am, have you been drinking?" And I say, "I'm drunk, but I'm okay." <laughs> and he's like, "Wow, step out of the vehicle." A year and a half later, I get my second DUI. I was like, "Ma'am, have you been drinking?" And I, this one, you thought I'd learn. I said, "A lot, but I'm okay." And he's like, "Wow, <laughs> step out of the vehicle." Tell me, it was the same guy, the same cop? <laughs> I wish it was two different states before real ID. So I was first DUIs in each state. I win. Wasn't that that'd be even funnier if you get the same cop and you said, "Hey, yeah. you're drinking." Go, yeah, for the last year and a half straight without stopping <laughs> until you got me. <laughs> I could do this he all was day. Like you'd been following me around. Yeah. Best I can remember, my, my friend's response that we were there was about eight of us crammed into his tiny sob. We were all sitting on top of each other. He gets pulled over. I mean, he's hammered. And the cop says, "You've been drinking." He says, "Yeah, I had one, one big one," and somehow <laughs> he let us go. I like how what was gayer—the fact that he's driving a sob, or the fact that you're all sitting on top of each other. 
There were women. <laughs> <laughs> three, three guys, three girls. It's like, okay. Have you ever I heard Chad that. Daniels? Have you, have you ever heard Chad Daniels bit about how he found out that he liked a finger up his ass? He's like, if any part of me is in a woman, then it doesn't matter what part of you is up my ass. <laughs> Because then I'm still I'm still straight. <laughs> so that's what he's telling you to shrink over and over and over to try and, <laughs> yeah. and smooth it out. Nice try, Chad. I think, <laughs> I think some douche was giving him shit for it. He was like, all right, whatever. Last and one so. at pedestrian. What bad spaghetti dinner caused this position? <laughs> uh yeah. My Nancy Cation, half Italian, could not make spaghetti to save her life. Bit of a pity that. Yeah, let me guess. Italians in, in in Wisconsin not exactly culinary experts. In the seventies? Are you kidding me? The worst. <laughs> so in nineteen seventy two, my father hated this, this movie because he was like, "This is I'm gonna we're all gonna get in a lot of trouble because of this movie. We're all gonna get in a lot of trouble." And then <laughs> he saw it and he was like, "It was a pretty good movie." <laughs> and uh, he's also an aluminum siding salesman, and he hated Tin Men until he saw it, and then he was like, "That movie was funny." Okay, so back to the plugs. Dave Quist, what are you up to? Where can we find you? Shout it out. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Dave underscore Quist, our main podcast account at Blockbuster Mentality. You can get us where you get the podcast. Our latest episode is The Prestige. And a couple coming up. I think we're going to get into one. some flop busters. Uh, I think the one that we're setting our eye on is John Carter. That could be the next one. KevinGoatee.com for the shenanigans and gutting the sacred cow.com. Go, go, go get yourself a hat. Go get yourself a mug. Go get yourself a shirt. Support your favorite movie debate, movie review podcast. That's much better than the Blockbuster Mentality. I trust you on that. Uh, <laughs> trust me on that excuse. <laughs> of course, we love those five star ratings and two or three sentence reviews. Come on, folks. That helps the algorithm. Gutting the sacred cow at gmail.com. Dave, let's really walk Jackie right into the pit of Mordor <laughs> and see if she has a possibility of Denting this absolute adamantium covered juggernaut and guts the, the sacred, sacred cow. cow. <laughs> unobtainium. Other, you guys cover it in unobtainium. Do whatever you want to do with it. That's hilarious. Great reference. Go ahead, Jackie. Thanks. Fire away. Okay. Uh, here's what I have. The thing is, is there's two problems with this movie. First of all, unless you're 70 years old, I'll go 60. Uh, there's no reason why you should like this movie when the first time you see it, because it's been hacked so bad that you're like, I get every like it's almost impossible to watch. You've heard all of the lines. You know that the horse is going to be there. You're just like, no, I no, I get it. I get it. Futurama made fun of it. Uh, family Guy made fun of it. Everyone made fun of it. Even like I think there's a Matthew Broderick movie where Marlon Brando plays himself. The, fresh, the freshman. That's that's it. And uh, so it'd be really hard to watch this movie if you weren't already 63 years old and uh, and, and think to yourself, this is great. Uh, but that being said, it is a beautifully shot movie. Uh, the reason I don't like it, I, Jackie Cation, don't like it is because it wasn't made for me. I don't give a shit. Uh, I've never enjoyed uh, a mobster movie. Uh, my father, uh, possibly because my dad hung around with a lot of dirt bags. I was like, yeah, it's like I can't watch reality show either. I already know people that are making terrible life choices. The uh, the fictionalization of what is actually like in in the world of actual mob movies, Miller's Crossing is better because it is actually even more realistic. Like, you know how, like, the Sheldon Leonard's and James Cagney movies were mm. all kind of, eh, I'm going to get you. And uh, and this one was, like, like menacing but quiet. Miller's Crossing is casually, like, Hitler-level cruelty where we're just going, oh, no, I'm going to actually kill that dog and that baby. And the and it, you're in my way, and I also want that $17. And so, mm. uh, I mean, these are not and, – and the reason I never watched The Godfather 2 – which uh, arguably is supposed to be better than The Godfather, uh, is that at the end of the movie, there's that long shot after he lies to Kay, and he says he's not going to 
he's not going to take over the business right. or he's, he's not the godfather or whatever. And that guy cuts his, kisses his ring and the door closes. I remember watching it thinking, well, this relationship isn't going to work out at all. <laughs> and that is my reasoning. There you go. Feel free to take it apart. Wow, that's it. Well, that's the shortest one we've ever had. I'm, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I mean, I barely my I still have <laughs> beer still left. I still, I still have, like I, my beer is like halfway gone. I just going on. <laughs> really? That's it? I just settled into my that's, chair, Jackie. <laughs> it's boring. It's super boring. I didn't like it because it bored the shit out of me. Is that something? I mean, that's something. <laughs> that is something. Yes. It's, Jackie, um... <laughs> Jack, if you're done, you're done. Jackie, give me a one to ten. Uh, and, 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 you know, and argue like uh, on the, on the grounds of me ever watching it again, or on the grounds of like how well done it was, or what's the one, your, to your on? overall opinion of the film, there are no boundaries. Or would I ever, re- would I ever recommend this film to anyone? Uh, uh no, I asked I one met- to 10. I didn't ask you if you recommend it or not. <laughs> okay. So then I give it a two. A two. A two. <laughs> a two. <laughs> a two. I got, I got, no, you're gonna this tell me this not- film is worse than Napoleon Dynamite, <laughs> <laughs> a movie I've never seen. Don't rush; it stinks. You're gonna tell me this film. <laughs> What's another two, Jackie? Give me, yeah. a, give us another two for reference. Good fellas. Oh. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, Taxi driver. Uh, I gotta go. Hannah and her sisters. Oh fuck. I, I rewatched it not long ago. It's not. It's definitely not a two. Really? <laughs> it's yeah. It's, I'm not a Woody Allen guy either. It's super some, boring. Some, some of those films are hit yeah, and miss. Yeah, it's also super... Well, the, here's the thing is... Here's what I will say about The Godfather is that it literally... If I were to meet a young man who idealized like a, a George Foster Wallace or a Hunter S. Thompson or a, a who loved, you know, was really into that, you know like a vice city call of duty. I do a podcast called the dork forest. And one of the, one of the episodes, I a really good guy, guy named Taylor musician, dude. And he loved first person shooters. And at one point said the most chilling thing I've ever heard in my life, which was when I asked him, were you ever in the service? He said, almost. <laughs> That's the creepiest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. No, it would it, it, it would have been creepier. It would have been creepier. He said, "No, but I've been practicing getting ready for my first school shooting next week." <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was the undercurrent <laughs> of almost. And uh, but I will say this is that if he asked me what movie uh, should he watch, I would tell him The Godfather. I would be like, "Dude, you would love The Godfather." You know what else he might enjoy? Uh, what was it also wasn't made for me. In 1982, Porky's. Terrible film. <laughs> terrible. Oh, it's, it's a terrible ter- film. Oh, it's awful. And it wasn't even well. Wasn't even well. That's because it was made for 13 year old boys. And um, well, hold on. I'm a 13 year old boy still at Harper. God damn it! It is not funny. It is terribly not funny. I watched it maybe that's a year or two ago. That's because you're also not 60 years old, right? right. No, because uh, if you would have been 13 in 1982, you would have been like, eh, "Who's all right?" I like but the titties. I, but I love and, Animal House, and that's 1978. So, yeah. I mean, we're right. going backwards here but with that's the logic. Animal, but. Yes. And, okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Porky's is actually arguably just a bad movie start to finish. Animal House. Um, yeah. I can't watch Animal House anymore. Jesus. I saw it in the theater. <laughs> It's on the theater. That's Jackie, you're years old. You know? I, have to, I have to know, what is a 10 for you? Give me like three 10s. Oh Christ! Not not no not not no. I love. Well, shit. When you come on and give the Godfather two, I love. Okay, Holiday. You ever see that? It's Uh, a Catherine. It's a it's a it's and it's and it's a comedy. I here's what I watch movies for. Okay, Kevin, you should know this. KG, you should know that Jackie Cation is watching movies uh, to be entertained. I am not watching movies to be sad. I am not watching movies to learn shit, and I am not watching movies uh, to be angry, right? So Holiday is a smart comedy, right? Holiday oh, here is we Catherine go. Hepburn, Cary, Cary Grant, Cary Grant and Catherine Hepburn, 1939. Oh, I've seen uh, that. Yeah, that's a good movie. Yeah, I've not yeah, seen that. That's too- okay. It's uh, and it's relatively adorable. Um, there's Casablanca, a movie okay. that I'll watch a uh, hundred times. Uh, uh, I'll watch Meatballs well, too. The Thin Man. 
the Thin Man series. The Thin Man series, I'll watch that. I'll watch, and I will watch things like Star Wars, Raiders, ch- uh, the Children's Crusade. No, uh, the, <laughs> 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 it's not the children. It's the, it's, the, it's the third one. What's the third? Last Raiders? Crusade. Last Crusade. It's not Love the Children's it. Crusade. Nobody's sending kids off into Miss Central Europe to die, Jackie. We're just letting anyway. you hang yourself here, Jackie. We're just... <laughs> <laughs> right. These are I mean, and the thing is is these are fun, good movies. Some people find The Godfather a fun, good movie, right? Uh, I don't know if anybody thinks it's fun. Fun, no, I would I would not say fun. No. Good, I would say people think that's definitely the case, but yeah. you fun. Don't, you don't I mean the the thing is is you, all of the all of my brothers quote this movie all the time and they think it's the funnest, funniest thing in the world to just go leave the gun, take the cannoli. Well, there's uh, sort of like a would, there's a surface level aesthetic that is amazing and quotable. And then there's a, there's a much deeper film uh, underneath that. What as is, well. where's the depth? Yeah. Sell it. Oh, sell we'll it. get what to that. I, <laughs> oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dave Quist. So, I love you. Love, love, here we go. You got your chance. Get those sites prepared. <laughs> cock it and load. <laughs> Not that I've, I'm the first person ever to defend the Godfather, but I think a, a good point uh, to start um, is, the the movie as sort of Jackie says the movie's not for me and I think I think there's even I haven't seen Barbie but I've 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 heard there's a joke in there about the Godfather um, and this idea that maybe the Godfather as we're sort of like what 51 years away from the release that it's a kind of movie Jesus just like Christ really yeah yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we're all getting old quickly um, but is it, it's a movie like just for like film bros or for guys like Dave Quist who have a podcast and we'll do an episode on The Godfather and talk about it for two hours with his co-host. Um, but <laughs> as 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 Kevin mentioned, it really at the beginning, the movie was a massive hit, and this is what's it's one of those rare films where uh, you get it's both critically adored and the audience loves and and. In fact, when The Godfather was released, I believe it was the it was the highest grossing movie of all time in nineteen yes. uh, to date in 1972. So this wasn't just and, some... And it lasted a long time, yeah. Right. And so this wasn't just some film bro, uh, art house, snobby film. This was a movie... This was a movie for everyone. Uh, and so I, I so I, that's where I would push back that I mean not every movie is for everyone, um, but at the do time, I get do, do do I get to respond to these things uh, piecemeal sure. or should I take notes? Come at me, Jack. Uh, Come at me. <laughs> oh, I will say this is that when you say it is for everyone and the um, look at the demographic of who was who was making those decisions, who everyone was, who is everyone the- in 1972. Who's well, going movie, to the movies? The movie going on. Who's writing these the are, reviews? These are families. Who's voting? Uh, they aren't families. They're uh, they're men. Uh, well, you don't get to be the. We're doing the sexist thing and now. I mean, I, no, no, literally. No, that's where you're going. Even, it is. You're, you're the greatest. I'm not talking wait, wait, about on. sexism. You're the highest grossing movie of all time. It cannot, by definition, be exclusive to to men. It just cannot. So no, and I'm not. And, but, we're going there. No, it, <laughs> Please don't not, go there. <laughs> no, I'm not. I, I'm not saying it's sexist. I'm saying that it was create. Is this sexism that it was all of the reviews and all of the movies and all of the moviegoers are men? That's not sexism. That's not. That's just a it's, fact. There's nothing. I'm. I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. I'm literally just saying it wasn't made for me. I mean, that's just not. Well, it. it that's not sexist. Uh, you think it was for made you. for me? Look, Citizen Kane is not made for me, and I'm, I'm with you guys on that. The fact that it was so beloved by critics and audiences at the time, um, I think, is is in its favor. Very similar. I mean, you mentioned Star Wars. I think that's one of the uh, that, that's another um, another one where critics and audiences came together. And actually, there's uh, now that I think about it, both of the movies are very very similar in the way they changed cinema. I think we saw after this was 1972, that whole style of 70s sort of dark, gritty was inspired i think godfather really changed drama kind of the way star wars changed fantasy sci-fi um because we're we man too right yeah. yeah stuff like yes exactly um and i think the reason why although you made a point jackie about the cultural references and, and kevin we ran into this with animal house too didn't we about how people know the joke from the thing that but they don't know where it came from because they heard right. it on some other thing but that's not the fault of the movie. That's just pop culture. So I don't know that you can. I don't think The Godfather takes a hit because 
someone else because it was so culturally influential that they then made a riff on it. So that's not a, that's not a fault to the original material. Uh, no, no, that well, it doesn't hold up though. I mean, it's very hard to watch it if you keep getting pulled out of the movie. You know, if you're a 22 year old watching this movie, going, "Well, that's." weird like like you kept getting pulled out of it'd be hard to enjoy a film it's sort of spoiler alert you know you're gonna know 17 lines in this movie and you're gonna wonder you're like is that from the simpsons and you're like what is that you know but that doesn't it's not gonna help the movie is what i'm saying for new people who want to see the film yeah i I understand that but i would say where the reason why it still resonates, uh, one of the reasons why it still resonates 53 years later, much in the way Star Wars does, is because although the film was three hours long and there's betrayal and some Italian guy name did something to this Italian guy name and I kind of forgot who this guy was and why they're doing the thing exactly if I'm not completely paying attention. <laughs> At its heart, it's a very simple story, which is it's a story about, in a way, it, it's it, it's a king who's facing life slowing him down and a world changing and has and he has three sons who he's going to have to give his kingdom to and none of them are his equal and uh, they're all flawed in some certain way and basically the, the the tv show succession is this exact same story just played as a dark comedy it's it's a very simple story would you say though of- that all not all three are flawed i think michael's the only lone pearl in that bunch and he, he didn't want to sully him by having him take over the family business it's well, kind of like he's a- Forced, he, it, forced issue to do that. He's he, yeah, he's, yeah. He gets forced into doing it. He's he has, you know, he's a war hero and uh and wants to be goes be a straight shooter, but he gets sucked into it. Yeah, you're going to be a senator or a president. But M- Michael's flaw is he's he's the most cunning of all of them, just as smart as Vito. But what he but what he becomes is cold hearted, and mm-hmm. it ends up destroying. He en- ends up destroying himself and everyone he loves, which we kind of get really more to. It's we see. We see that path at the end of this one, but really in the second movie, Jackie. I think you should. You, I think you'd enjoy the second movie. You probably won't because it's not made for you. <laughs> <laughs> I have been given. I was given VHS of this movie. I've been given <laughs> DVDs of this movie. I've been given Blu-ray of this movie. It's the reason I picked this movie is because it's... I've only watched the VHS and then the streaming. <laughs> So. so I think that setup is really why it still works because it's just it's an age old tale of a king with basically yes. unworthy sons. And as, as powerful right. as Michael becomes, he is he is very flawed. Um, and we, we know Sonny being a hothead, it basically gets him killed because he's quick to anger. Um, Fredo is not stupid, um, but just too trusting and easily manipulated and really just wants approval that he never really gets around him. So he gets it from other people. Um and so I think that's kind of really what the real appeal is. And then we have Kay, who, and there was a question, KG, on Twitter, why would she do that? She's attracted to it. She's attracted to the money and the power. As it, She yep. doesn't like herself for liking it, but she's completely drawn to it. She knows at the end of this movie that Michael's lying to her. And she oh, yeah. just, she's she's kind of there for it. Just <laughs> she, making a, yeah, she's she's consciously making a terrible life choice. And so I and don't think I it's the I have seen quotes. it happen in real life. Yeah, because that's, that's what feels real. And if you want to know why people like stories like this, it's because they see themselves in these characters. There's, there's a bit of Fredo in all of us. As, as much as we would really hate to admit, when my papa's getting shot down in the street, I might fumble my gun. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. If I if if I face a tragedy when I when I go off to Sicily, which is I, to me, I think the Sicily stuff is the most beautiful thing in almost all of cinema. There's very little dialogue. Uh, it's just a score and just a little bit of I, I see this girl. I talk to her father. It's beautiful. And then she gets blown up and died. And there goes the rest of my soul <laughs> as a human being. And so I'm like one tragedy away from just becoming a complete, I be becoming Satan essentially, you know, or, or if I'm quick tempered. So I think it's those archetypes, Jackie, I think that, that draws to those things. Right. Um, it's, it's not about sleeping with the fishes. It's not about the cannoli. I mean, no. it, they're fun lines, uh, but I think that's no, why a- the story is endured. And what would you have done with Carlo, Jackie? Oh, good question. Uh, oh, Carlo and I would not have met. Uh, there's <laughs> I know how Jackie would. I know how Jackie would have fixed him. She would have gotten in a car and gotten her third DWI. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, we would have got real close to an edge, and I would have pushed him off. Mm-hmm. It's uh, no, there was a lot of hitting in my childhood. Weirdly enough, my mother used to beat up my dad. It was one of the reasons why he left. 
And, uh, I guess your dad was... could have put his hands up and throw a, j- a proper jab. <laughs> well, he was he was told he wasn't supposed to hit women, so he he fucking bolted, leaving all six of us to get the shit beat out of us for the next four years. So I don't have a lot here. You know, I, well, I could be brief like Jackie and say it's amazing you suck, but no, <laughs> <laughs> you may, yes, you're not wrong. And so we get a classic story with amazing actors, top to bottom. Uh, even Robert Duvall, who's really just a kind of minor bit in this, is great. Everyone is great. James Caan is perfect. Pacino, of course, we know. Um, and Talia Shire, who I, who I adore. Um, everyone top to bottom is great. And so that's what I like. It's the little touches within the film. It's the filmmaking. It's the acting. It's 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 it's, it's it is it starts very simple or at its core and then it gets more complex and the movie's always ahead of you you're never ahead of the film what's going on and that's that's one of the, a failure of writing especially now where you're like okay this guy's going to do this thing you're never like that when you're watching this movie maybe you're bored okay fine i can't do anything for your attention span no no <laughs> well, oh shit uh, so wait so you're a filmmaker dave quist is that what i'm is that what i I'm understand? a jackass i'm a film bro with a podcast that's all i am yeah, take a number. Okay. <laughs> that's all. I'm a toxic male with a podcast. That's all. That's it. I'm just a fan. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but you, but the, but, but you enjoy the mechanics of it, right? Absolutely. So, yeah. Because I, yeah, yeah as I, so, I see it yeah. as it's happening on screen, I go, okay, I'm not, that's I, that's awesome. I am not a film. I am not a filmmaker, and I'm not much of a film buff. So uh, you don't say, which is very sad. <laughs> I know, sad. hard to believe. I mean, we're dragging things through the gutter, so those words were put into my mouth. Hence this podcast. As far as like, <laughs> hence this podcast. So, uh, but it is not. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's shit. As I as I said from the you beginning, called it a two. Just, I just didn't like <laughs> it. Yeah. Even a two. Oh, for, but that was what he asked. He insisted that I pick for me. What is it? A two. I I, I feel confident. <laughs> Hold on, I'm saving. I'm saving myself. Dave, what do you have? Score? You have a score there for me, or you're you going to get more points? No, I think I'm good. I'll give it a score. I'm gonna. This is a ten. <laughs> uh, not, o- not only is it not only is it on the Ebert scale of did it succeed in doing what it wanted to do, it's just a fucking awesome movie. And in fact, in in it's a sort of thing where you you have to, uh, Jackie. I'm not trying to sell you, but once you get into <laughs> the, once you get into the pacing of this film, once you get what it's doing, you are just so locked in. And, and when the, when the movie ended, I just let I let part two roll, and I'm like 30, 45 minutes into part two, and I'm like, Christ, I got I got shit to do today, <laughs> kind of a thing. And I, I I DM'd KG, or I think I twittered or tweeted at you that I was mm-hmm. watching it, and it, it I'm gonna I'm gonna lose my whole day watching part two, uh, because it's right. it's there is a certain there's a feel to the to, to these films and uh, and once and again once you're locked into them it's 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 very rare it's a very rare feeling that you get um from other movies for me but you got to take it on your own it's like Just, anything though you yeah. have to be you have to be it could be anything if you're not in the mood for it because it's you're you it'll can't, lose you you can't do it yeah yeah, yeah. but 10 but it doesn't mean i don't like you two. guys and uh, I, I like you and too I love jackie them. These notes brought to you by guttingthesacredcow.com or again, where you can buy a hat, mug, shirt, bag, and leave us that five star rating for the love of Christ. Do it, okay, guys. What the? God damn it. I screen shoot, screenshot. Have we, have we agreed in the verb? Do screenshot, it right now. screen shoot. Yeah. There you go, Jack. This podcast will play in the background. Yeah. And then you just fucking go there and leave a five star. two sentences. I hated that bitch, yeah. but I love this show. <laughs> <laughs> and- Listen, Jackie will come to your house, get drunk, and make you drive with her. She goes for DWI number seven. <laughs> That's the ticket now. Yeah. <laughs> While I also text. Love it. <laughs> Notes. Don Coyo makes a great point about the magician, a uh, more magician, mortician, about having his hand out and never offering anything in return when he needs something. Kind of like stand-up comics with stage time. Can I get a spot? Can I get a spot? Can I get a spot? <laughs> oh, they don't return emails. Unless you did give him a spot. Jackie, that joker's for you and I. You just us. Hey, he built an he built an empire on exchanging favors. After the Corleone wedding, all the wedding guests then throw on tank tops and hit the Point Pleasant boardwalk down the Jersey Shore while double fisting White Claws. Did you guys know that? <laughs> yeah. As a Jersey boy, ready. I have and, to. And, and, yeah. Yep. Luca Brazzi sounds like Mongo from Blazing Saddles with Down <laughs> Syndrome. <laughs> Perfect. 
<laughs> we are Al Pacino right now. We're moving from high pitch Al in stage one, Dog Day Afternoon, to regular voice Pacino in stage two. Another 20 years, he hits Hua, great ass stage three Al Pacino, <laughs> stage four Al Pacino, agreeing to do Jack and Jill with Adam Sandler, and stage five, coughing virile dust inside of a woman with granddaddy issues. That's the opportunity. <laughs> well, it is amazing. His transformation as a character. And yes, as a human being, he's he just continued to morph literally. <laughs> the old guy singing at the wedding looks like he's doing his best Mitch McConnell stroke face. <laughs> My wife and I had a pretty above average wedding, just over 100 people. I'm having Ajita from watching this wedding, which has at least 500 guests. This wedding must have cost more than Hunter Biden built from the Chinese and Ukrainian governments. <laughs> ever bang someone at a wedding, guys? Is that ever pull, ever pull someone down at a wedding and uh, do like <laughs> sunny then? I, I got game, but not that not that kind of game. I got good. This is this this is a good story. I actually met a, a woman a day uh, one day at the beach, and she's like, "I have to go to a wedding tonight. Do you want to be my date?" And I am shit faced. I go, "Yeah, you have to drive me back to my house, and I have to get a suit." She was like, "Done." So of course we go to the wedding, and that night it's like, "Hey, it's time to what? bang, right?" Yeah. Oh yeah. Go back to your house. And he goes, "It's time to bang, right?" She goes, "Oh, I can't. I'm ovulating." And the last thing she I said before passing out was, "Hey, your mouth's not ovulating, is it?" <laughs> she agreed. Oh, the memories, the, yeah. the memories, you guys. Sound she, logic. She uh she acquiesced. Good girl. Well, this is the this is the first time in movie history, Dave Quest. I have seen a large cake make its way through a crowd, and absolutely nothing happens to that cake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine if something had happened to that fucking cake. That you know, should have been the B plot, Jackie. Right. Which is the story the plot. The, it yeah. falls on the <laughs> table. It falls on like one of the head mafia guys as a guest, and an instant gang warfare breaks out. <laughs> I got to go to the bathroom. I taped a gun under the. <laughs> yeah. The horse head scene reminds me about the time I had a one night stand in. Would you believe she neglected to tell me she was on her period? She claimed, oh, it must be do some spotting because I'm on some kind of new birth control. Sure, it was. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. This girl horse headed me, or this. Yeah, that. Oh, a, I love that. I love yeah. that DQ. <laughs> oh, she horse headed me. What does that mean? Woke up in a bed full of, of with bed full of period what? blood. <laughs> that's going to the lexicon DQ. I'm giving you all credit that's, on that one. Heavy funny. flow, heavy flow. You guys, you gotta, what? you gotta admit it. Uh, watching, <laughs> watching, watching Luca Brazzi's face as he got the Garrett. Looked like my face when I watched the first eight minutes of Ken Jong's stand-up special on Netflix. Oh shit! <laughs> it that was, was that was terrible. Is, I that doc, that one, yeah. is that Doctor Ken? Yes, yeah. from The Hangover. Oh, I don't know him. Okay, right. sure you. Do. I never saw that either. No, D- listen, know. listen. But I think I don't don't rush. Don't rush. <laughs> don't rush. Uh, I think he. We. I think he did a set at the uh, at at the Improv when I saw him, and he was very charming, and I. Uh, did yeah. don't remember any punchlines. Five shots and Don Corleone still lives. Did they send Italian stormtroopers to kill him? <laughs> How about that? The dramatic, most dramatic fall in movie history. Over oh, the yeah. car. <laughs> That's great. When they whack, when they whack Pauly, they just get out of the car and walk. They're in the swamp, and it looks like Jersey at best. Who's picking them up? There's no car nearby. That is a long hike back, especially for a guy on the wrong side of 350 pounds and has the body of an Italian grimace. <laughs> I'd have to agree with that. I was wondering to say, yeah, like, where the fuck are they going? They're going to walk through the grass field? Yeah. Where are they going to get back? That, th- those are swamps, I promise you. We've all been there, Michael Corleone. You're on the phone with your lady friend, and she's trying to get you to say, I love you when your buddies are there. I fully expected him to say, hey, put a cork in it, honey. Daddy's talking business. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love Clement is like I love you with all of my heart. That made yeah. a smile. Yeah. And here and here's Talia Shire with the most Italian of stereotypes for the women, smashing dishes in anger. Oh, we haven't seen that coming, have we? Age is the worst poison. Why? Diane Keaton was an attractive woman back then, but now <laughs> looks like Penny Marshall with a meth problem. <laughs> You should see Penny Marshall now. She's dead. I know. <laughs> you know I actually I know. have to say, if there is a negative, I don't think she's great 
in this film. She really doesn't do doesn't really there's that one line in part two which then you know seals it all but um yeah i would say she's kind of a negative in this film I is think she the oh. she the weakest link okay yeah. yeah i think k i think they could have done they needed a different actress there for for michael i think i don't think or she just that, not this her one, at all but, just no but, women at all just take her out completely. no <laughs> not a, no hey don't <laughs> We're doing this again. Yeah. <laughs> I think you just made this. I, you just made this sexist. Why did you do that? No, I think she's a f- phenomenal actress, and she's. <laughs> I said part two is maybe the best, maybe it's the best good. delivery in all of the movies. But I think she's right. slightly miscast in this one. The restaurant scene with all... Soletto and McCluskey is still goddamn amazing. If that doesn't oh, make yeah. you drop the remote, I don't know what will. Oh yeah. Everyone in this film is dressed at all times like they're going to the White House Correspondents' Dinner, except Sonny. <laughs> he's dressed like he's about to enter an arm wrestling contest at a flea market. <laughs> he's got the hairy <laughs> chest and everything. Really... <laughs> the white, the, the the white guinea tea, uh, yeah. white beater. Okay, nothing, yeah. nothing like a bunch of dudes talking about how hot women are, and then the cold, the metaphorical cold, cold water thrown in your face moment when you realize they're talking about your daughter. <laughs> I can't That's wait. That's like but... that a scene in Say Anything. How, how come you're sitting film, outside the, the gas and sit? By gas choice. And sip. No women anywhere. Yeah. By, cho- by choice. <laughs> I can't wait for that moment when my daughter is in then 18 and 10 years. Great. Can't wait. Oh, man. Michael has a black eye in Italy, but no one explains why he has a black eye. Good call. I mean, like, how long? Yeah. What is that? Right, because it's 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 got to be weeks or a month. It's not like two days, right? So I agree. Did a local town girl bash him in the face with a rolling pin in true Italian fashion? Ah, <laughs> uh, the days when women claimed getting a black eye was their fault. If Chris <laughs> Brown only had access to a real life time machine, yeah, I wrote this down. I called an audible before. I forgot about this. Sonny giving Carlo. A half step better beating than Robert De Niro giving a, a slow curb job during in quick in quicksand during the Irishman. I wrote that down too. Sunny, yep. Sunny, continuing to continually walking around clothes in clothes that would confuse him for a platinum member on a Carnival cruise ship. <laughs> the guys who shot Sunny at the toll booths all dressed like the henchmen in Batman nineteen eighty nine. Or Michael Jackson's Smooth Criminal video. Which one? <laughs> smooth Criminal. I have it. Yeah. This is very hard for me to swallow this moment. How the hell did all those people, the hitmen, know that Sonny would be at that toll booth at the exact moment? I know Carlo was in on what it. What lane? Right. What well, lane? yeah. As well as if he, Carlo decides to tune her up, tune up Connie as bait to get him to come, that is insane planning. I just, that's the one thing I'm like, I'm not buying it. Like I'm going to go beat up. Hold on. Let me go beat up my wife, his sister. And I guarantee in 35 minutes, he'll be at the toll booth. Cause you know, people just sitting there, you know, trying to pitch pennies in a cup or doing something in the past time, smoke cigarettes. I don't know. I just didn't buy that. That was only one thing. No I cell be- phones, no cell right. phones. I think Michael has codependency issues when his Italian bride gets blown to bits. And then he comes back to America to get back with Wednesday night girl, by the way, <laughs> Kay, Kay is that woman who probably nags her husband at, at, when they're at a party that she wants to be the first to leave. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. As if having a heart attack and dropping to the ground isn't bad enough, you have some little shit squirting water on your face as you slowly take your last breaths. It's kind of tough <laughs> to watch, isn't it? Because right. it's it's just, what is he, like a three-year-old? So he yeah. thinks he's plays playing, right? So, yeah. yeah, son of a bitch, I'm dying here. <laughs> The Michael baptism scene, I'd rather get molested by a priest than sit through an entire mass in Latin. (laughs) The hits on the other families during that baptism is textbook execution in wrapping up a story. God damn, that was great. And I forgot about how they all just whacked a one shot. Fantastic. Hey, by the way, playing the role of non-stock shrieking Shelley Duvall from The Shining is Talia Shire's Connie Corleone. She just wails on without bringing anything to the table. I, I got I got a part there. I think she's great. I really do. Um, and one thing about the, <clears throat> the, the baptism scene, it's that is one where I'll say it's, it's a little, I mean, 
it's a little heavy handed with, you know, I renounce Satan and all his works or whatever he says. And one, and one, the cheesiest thing I've ever seen, I think in maybe any movie is that when the, the guy was playing the cop, when he then like crouches down and the way he the aims yeah. with the, <laughs> it's like, that's the worst. <laughs> it's like he has a sniper rifle, but with a 38. Yes. I, know. <laughs> I agree. It would have been different if it would have been John Rockford, uh, John Rockford, rock. What, what was Rockford files name? What was is his it first Sam? name? Jack? I never watched it. Is it. Was it Sam? Yeah. No, that's, um, oh Christ. James uh, Garner. Garner. James Garner, but yeah. w- w- his first name was oh. might have been Jim, oh, was Jim Rockford. Jim, it was yeah. Jim Rockford. Yeah, he went Corne- by Jim That's Cornelius. It. No, just kidding. I have written <laughs> way more jokes than notes for this episode. You oh know my why? God. I you <laughs> yeah. know why? Because this film's perfect. Why? That's why. Because you don't got to say much. <laughs> Characters, the storytelling. Every single beat, every beat, every scene has got a joke because every needs to be mentioned. Yes. I didn't even, yeah, I didn't even get to, uh, it, the plot doesn't even matter, right? I didn't even get to Michael killing the, the cop and, and it's a lot. So it's, uh, uh, it's, we're good. I it, never right, thought. The plot does not need to. <laughs> that, right. You just summed right. it up. The plot doesn't even matter. The plot doesn't even matter. You're like, all, mm, this all is right. what, this is one of the three <laughs> films I never thought I would see attacked on this film on this podcast ever. This Goodfellas Empire Strikes Back, I think, would never ever face the heat. <laughs> and here we are. There is never a slow moment. Are. There's a, never a slow moment in this nearly three hour film. <laughs> I did not look at my watch once. The character development where Michael turns from a good, plain, you know, g- gentle soul, kind guy from a war hero to pure, just almost devil, manipulative asswipe <laughs> is pure screenwriting 101. Kevin Israel will be proud of the character development in this film. Uh, t- uh, Tessio getting turned, all these people getting turned. That's just great arc. Love it. The plot airtight. The performance is brilliant and without question. 10 out of 10. This film still without question. Oh, the also a time. 10. Also a 10. Just like you, Jackie, a 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some parts of Wisconsin. <laughs> she knows all of them. <laughs> yeah. Sheboygan, Madison, but never, ever, ever Green Bay. I don't know. Just pull out three cities. From, that's all I know. Uh, right, right. You know, this one is going to get the old critics metaphorical hand job, DQ. Let's hear what the critics' five star reviews are. Let's do it. Skepticism of America exceptionalism is far more commonplace than when it was when The Godfather was released. But the fragility of the American dream was revealing itself as the illusion it had always truly been. Word soup. What do they well, mean? In that? And I, th- I think part of it is the idea that we're I'm going to come to this country and then every, it, it, the rules are everyone follows the rules and they're all going to be enforced. And that was goes back to that first scene where uh, the morticians like I went to the cops, they beat up my daughter and they just let him go suspended sentence. And there is a further critique, actually, when when Michael meets up with Kay and she and she's she's kind of uh, ber- not berating him, but criticizing him for. For the for what they're in, she's like presidents and senators don't get men killed. He's like, what are you fucking naive? Of yeah. course they fucking do. I this love is that the, line. And, yeah, and this the story does it does a lot. To, to, this whole saga does a lot about talking about what the nature of power is and how it how it actually works. Um, and so, yeah, I think there there are it's some entirely about power. The Godfather works like a masterfully conducted orchestra whose immaculate symphony is a meticulously crafted and extraordinary integral thread. In the fabric of cinema history, this guy sounds like it takes about eighteen minutes to order a cup of coffee. <laughs> right, right. I think he's actually talking about the soundtrack. <laughs> it's an actual symphony. Good for you, sir. The Godfather is the most memorable, most influential, most quoted, most beloved, most discussed, most imitated, most revered, and most entertaining American movie ever made. <laughs> I would say the most quoted film of all time: Caddyshack. <laughs> oh wow. All right. there, there is not a simply sorry. There is simply not a character introduced or exchange of words or looks that doesn't inform or add. Yes, absolutely. very true. Very intentional with every. See, single I wonder if he reads. I wonder if he reads that out loud to himself while his wife is blowing <laughs> him. I really hope he does. Just, it's just, just in a. <laughs> I aspire to that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine getting topped off while you're writing with those pretentious <laughs> yeah. Amazon reviews? <laughs> right. Just like, honey, I'm just going to, I'm actually going to dictate this. Blow me and write it down for me. Mm. And uh, so. <laughs> you forgot a semicolon. <laughs> <laughs> 
critics one star reviews an overblown pretentious oh. slow ultimately tedious three hour quasi epic uh, wrong man. I found that <laughs> it I feels that. it feels like more effort than I would do. Like I literally would not bother. Have you ever written a one star review? <laughs> yes. What, you, what do I care? <laughs> what what do, yeah. do I? I mean, not I didn't for this, like though. it. Okay. <laughs> no, no, one. not for this. <laughs> no. Okay. Only for restaurants. Next one. <laughs> I, I found that flogging for about three hours in that quagmire was spiritually debilitating and a crazy waste of time. Uh, all right someone doesn't like sad. fun <laughs> <laughs> someone got sad i don't see how any gifted actor could have done less than brando does here his resonant power his sheer innate force has really seemed weaker signed carrot top well i'll be doing oh. that's, that's yeah. amazing. <laughs> oh, oh. <fuck> off. <laughs> an intellectual's daydream it was understated yeah. yes oh yeah. go ahead an intellectual's daydream about revenge without remorse and power without accountability. Are you kidding me? Everyone dies. Everyone <laughs> fuck fucking you. dies. <laughs> what the hell? Then, yes. The only one that survives is basically dead inside at the end. Yeah. Oh, come on, man. Three people. Three people. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, mongoloids. Amazon five star reviews. I am not going oh. to write a. I am not going to write a movie review. Numerous reviews by film critics are available uh. in every corner of the internet. I purchased this during Prime Day, and the price was very good. Hey, I guess that means that Bezos made an offer they couldn't refuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, nice. oh, I see what I see. Uh, I get it. Bada bing, bada boom. Mm -hmm. That's what I do. Next one. This one. This one made me. Next to Scarface, greatest movie ever. Oh no! No. The, no next no, 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 to Scarface. No. Yeah. No, oh no, yeah. No. The Confused. second the second half of that sentence is spot on. The first half of that sentence was written, <laughs> the first half of that sentence was written by someone who makes Down syndrome seem seasonal. There you go. Oh. <laughs> yes, I can't imagine. God, that, I that's love, a funny idea on its own. Have, right? Have you guys seen Miller's Crossing? <laughs> yeah, yes. I, I I was not crazy okay. about it. Yeah. Mm, that's because it's super depressing. Because right. it's about the actual mob. <laughs> no. God, I love Vito anyway. Corleone. Actor played him so well. Out of this world. Love how they couldn't. By the way, love how they could put. They couldn't put down one of the greatest actors of all time and one of the most iconic roles of all time. That's cute. No. Okay. Amazon. <laughs> okay. Amazon. One star yeah. reviews. You ready for this? Oh yeah. All right. Give it back. to me. There are no Amazon one star reviews. Ooh, Jackie. That's hey, correct. <laughs> How it, That's everyone who didn't like it didn't bother. That's so, what I had. Good for you, so, Amazon so, one star reviewers. There are none. There are. No, this is the first no one star reviews. So what? Yeah, I, there's always some idiot who's got some problem with something, right? Ready? I know, right? That's that's my whole point. So I, what I did do is I cheat. I go here's some Amazon three star reviews because that's the lowest. That's they the go. lowest. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Actually, wow. Uh, only a couple nicely discounted price, but I got my money's worth. The picture, <laughs> the, <laughs> the picture quality is low definition. I think some of the scenes have been edited out, and language has definitely been dubbed over. I think this may be the approved television version from the seventies. Wow, the hell would buy that? Yeah, I got a one star review for that three star review. <laughs> what an idiot! <laughs> There, are, I, there is a few bit of ADR, a lot of ADR in this movie that I noticed this time around, um, which did kind of take me out. I guess they just didn't capture the audio in the initial record. But um, yeah, I did. Just, I I did receive it quickly. The wrapping on the DVDs and the cellophane looked really cheap. I didn't open it because it was a gift for someone else. But from what I could tell, the DVD Godfather image seemed home printed. That being said, for the price, I am happy because it was used as a hoax slash gift. Signed, Donald Trump Jr. No, well, that's interesting. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> All right, let's get up. Let's let's <laughs> let's. I like that. Thank you. Let's wrap it up mm -hmm. with who's funnier, Chat GPT or KG? These are jokes that Chat GPT has written about the Godfather. Number oh one, get ready, Jackie. Strike. If you write these down, okay. uh, Chat GPT will be suing you for your next special. <laughs> Finally. Finally. <laughs> Good press. <laughs> Why did the Godfather start a pasta company? 
because he knew how to make an offer they couldn't refuse a delicious plate of spaghetti. Oh, that's great. Oh, my God. Wow, this, the third beat flows away. <laughs> Backwards whistle. Oh, good. What the fuck? Why? <laughs> That's nice. The, the slide whistle comes out for this. Why? Why did the God? Why the TV loves that? Why? Why did the Godfather become a weatherman? He had a talent for predicting the stormy relationships in the mafia. Ooh. Why? Did, I'll retire. Uh, why, why did they? Why did the? I'm, God, I'm not. I didn't get it through the mic. Oh, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't? it's not. It's not playing. Yeah. Damn it! All right. Why did the Godfather switch careers to play the baker? He loved the idea of whacking the dough to make the perfect cannoli. <laughs> oh, fuck that. <laughs> wow. And that's it. And that's hey. it for ChatGPT. Okay. I, think what about KG? I, think Chat, I think we're safe. We're safe from ChatGPT. ChatGPT yeah. uh, 0. Like... K, yeah. KG 21, yeah. ChatGPT 0. <laughs> Folks, that is going to wrap up another banger episode of Gutting the Sacred Cow. Jackie Casey, and thanks so much. DQ, love hanging out with you. We'll see you all next time. Aloha.